is Austin Price previewing real tackle football played in General Nealon's House of Football this weekend, Tennessee and Chattanooga. Austin, how are you? I'm doing great, guys. How are you all doing? We are great. Right. We are glad to be in a game week talking Tennessee football. Uh, I know, first of all, Austin, uh, you had an exclusive one-on-one with Josh Heupel. Uh, a great interview. If you've not checked this out, VolQuest.com, uh, the VolQuest YouTube uh, channel as well, has that and everything you need getting ready for kickoff. Uh, Austin, what did you take away from that conversation and your sitting down with Coach Heupel? He's just excited for the season, likes his team a lot, and you know, it's frankly, I think, much like the fans and media covering the team, ready to get to Saturday. I mean, like, a lot of times, you know, coaches kind of stay in the moment, but even then, I think he's he's excited just to get to Saturday and get to, to you know, a football game, even if it's Chattanooga. You know, he's, he, he's ready to kind of see how his team performs uh, when the lights come on, because you know, how they practice and how they perform can be two different things. So I think you just wanted to see kind of, you know, how they're gelled up as they head into this year. So, Austin, for you, what do you hope to learn? What are you most interested to watch on Saturday when Tennessee plays Chattanooga? I think for me it's just the operations of it all. I mean, that, what does the offense look like uh, with Nico running it versus Joe? Because I think it, it, it's going to be two different things. Um you know, just how they worked, you know, different parts of the field. Do they work the middle of the field more? I think you'll see the tight ends involved. Uh, I think, you, you know, Tennessee's really deep at receiver. I guess what does the rotation look like at receiver? What does the rotation look at look like at a lot of positions? Um, you know, so I, I think th- there's a lot to kind of be intrigued by as you head into a, a game that, again, Tennessee's going to win. Um, as they get ready for really the big first test, which will be next week in Charlotte. Austin Price of OnQuest at Austin, Austin Priceless at on Twitter. Austin, uh, at the tight end position, Ethan Davis, Miles Kitzelman, Holden stays. What do you think that breakdown in terms of snaps, in terms of of looks with the, the starters looks like on Saturday? You know, I, I don't even think they've decided who's going to be the starter. If you ask me who was going to be the starter, I would tell you it's probably going to be Miles Kitzelman, outside shot of Ethan Davis. I don't. I do not think it will be a Holden stays, but I think all three are going to play. I think depending on the play call could determine who's in the game for the first play. Um, but as far as who plays the most, I think it'll be you know probably be Kitzelman Davis and then stays. But I think all three are going to play and play quite a bit. Tennessee's planning on rotating at that position. You know, again, planning and doing is two different things, but they're planning on rotating at that position uh, more than they ever have. And so uh, I, I know they love that room. They feel like that, you know, they're as deep there as they've been since Josh Heupel um, has been here. Austin Price with us of all question on three. Austin, we've spoke so much, man, about the newcomers this year, man, as far as the skills that they have. How, how big of a year is it for Dylan Sampson, man, and the expectations for him as he's made a few preseason lists himself? I think it's a big year. Obviously, you know, in a perfect world, Dylan Sampson goes and has a monster year and is off to the NFL. Um, but who knows how this kind of plays out, but – He's not had a chance to be the guy guy. I mean, he did that in the bowl game, but like I'm talking about for like game after game after game. So what's he going to look like? How's he going to handle the load, um, the workload when he is the guy each and every week? Now, you have a lot of young, talented players behind him in that room. How they progress, I think, will determine, you know, how much Tennessee truly has to lean on him. But he's got to stay healthy. And, you know, he's been able to do that for the most part during his Tennessee career, but it's going to be different when he's, you know, getting the most carries on the team compared to just being kind of a compliment piece to Jalen Wright or, or Jabari Small. So uh kid's got a great head on his shoulders. He's got a lot of talent. And, uh, I, that, you know, I'm interested to kind of see how he does as the guy guy. No doubt about it. Also, this weekend, the operation of it. Now, I don't want to call UT Chad a lesser opponent, but they're 
you know, their, their chat is just what I'll say, okay? With that being said, you expect the offense to move forward and, and be competitive. With this group of wide receivers and Brew coming back into the fold, man, who do you see this weekend as a guy that can really take a step? Or do you see somebody claiming the wide receiver number one role in this style of offense that the, uh, that the Vols play? I mean, I don't know if there'll be a wide receiver one. I think Chris Brazel has a chance to to be someone that Nico leans on a lot, but I think he'll you know he'll share the wealth quite a bit, uh, and I think they plan on rotating. Brew talked about that when he was leaving his media availability the other day, just how taxing it was in 2022 when he, Jalen Hyatt, and then um, Cedric Tillman slash you know. Uh, um, the other players kind of had to rotate in and out at that other spot when Tillman one got hurt. Um, you know, how, how much that really affected, you know, them later in the year. So they want to be able to rotate so they can stay fresh. So when they get to Georgia in November or Vanderbilt in November, or, you know, as they hope, potentially a playoff game in December, they are more ready to go. And so I, I think that, the rotation at that position will be one of the more intriguing things to watch based off the fact that they haven't done that a whole lot. That's just not been their MO because once they start a series, barring an injury, a timeout, or something like that, a stoppage in play, they never substitute because that defeats the purpose of the tempo. So, um, you know, I, I think, you know, for Tennessee, that wide receiver spot, the lead spot, I'm not sure you'll really see that, but if you're asking me who who could be that new guy that maybe leads them in catches, if it's not Squirrel White, I do think it could be Chris Granzel. Austin Price of Allquest joining us, as he does every time this week. Austin, when it comes to Nico Iamaliava in his uh, start this Saturday, how much is just kind of relying on some of the veterans, uh, including the, the guys in front of him and some of the guys on the outside that it can kind of calm the situation when you're out there uh, for the first time officially a, as a starter? I well, think you lean on the offensive line. I uh, think you lean on Cooper Mays, Javante Spragans, uh, even a guy like Dylan Sampson, mm-hmm. who's not played a ton, but just Again, Dylan Sampson is very mature. There's a reason he was on the leadership council as a sophomore. Um, he's a very vocal guy. So there are players you can lean on on the offensive side of the ball if you're Nico. Um, you know, Brew McCoy is another one that, you know, it was, it's been well established how much, you know, Nico looked up to Brew when he was a younger kid growing up in California. And Brew was the hot shot star at the time coming out of modern day. So there are options there. Uh, I do think Nico's laid back cool demeanor helps Kayla uh just kind of never get rattled although you know again this week I don't you have to worry about that but you know that first month neutral side game in Charlotte and then road at Oklahoma and road at Arkansas before you ever get a really meaningful home game against Florida on October 12th so I, I think you know his demeanor will be able to help him in those instances but those other veteran players can help him as well and Austin, just playing off of that, you know, I know we get people here that call in and say, oh, you know, you're starting off the season with a cupcake. And then you go and see what happens with Georgia Tech and Florida State. And Florida State has already opened up the season with the loss. How beneficial is it to kind of get a game like chat before you get into some of those games that might be more meaningful for these tune-ups for a new guy like Nico? Yeah, I think, it, you know, for fans and even for players, it's not nearly as exhilarating as playing a big time opponent, but it does allow you to kind of wade into the water in the shallow end. You're not getting tossed in the deep end and saying swim. So, uh, as, as a team, I think that, you know, they may not appreciate it right now, but if they are able to work on a few things, clean them up that they struggle with week one against Chattanooga, it may benefit them week two against NC State. So I think it's, you know, again, not ideal because you'd like to get, you know, right to play in a big game. But at the same time, at some point in your schedule, you're going to play an opponent that you're going to handle pretty good. Why not go ahead and get that out of the way and kind of knock the rust off, so to speak, in this first game against Chattanooga? 
Austin Price of OnQuest with us at Austin Priceless, where you follow him on Twitter covering Tennessee. Uh, Austin, on the recruiting front, uh, the Vols get a commitment from defensive back Onis Conan Banny over the weekend. Uh, what does Tennessee like about him and a guy that uh, seemingly has a lot of upside and was wanted by uh, some legitimate programs, namely Florida State? They love his length, um, his explosiveness. He, he's still raw. Um, the kid, again, grew up over in parts of France, parts of England, before he made his way to South Carolina. And so, like, it's not like I'm expecting him to come in here and start as a true freshman. But they love his upside. They they think he's he's got all the things you can't teach, all the traits that Coach Heupel talks about when he talks about recruiting players with the media. And so they they love his demeanor and just kind of his personality. So, um, again, longer corner, explosive, and a kid that can run for his size. Austin, this weekend uh, on Friday, I'm going to bring up a topic that was certainly a uh, a big topic of conversation in the VolQuest chat last night. Um, George McIntyre at Brentwood Academy on the zone this Friday night for our game of the week, uh, taking on Brentwood High School. I Brentwood Academy losing to CPA over the weekend, uh, a late interception in that game, and and a lot to sort through. Uh, Austin, what does Tennessee uh, like in George that maybe, I'm trying to find the right way to phrase this, we won't get to see as much of this year because there is a, a, a big system change that is happening there that Paul Wade's had a lot of success with, but again, maybe uh, a, a longer transition time for George this season. Yeah, I didn't get the chance to watch that game, but from based off, you know, I mean, I've seen all the comments, just to call it a 1980s offense, that type of stuff. I, I knew he would ball control it some to try to protect the fact that his his team's not as talented as other teams in, in Division II AAA. You know, I, again, I, I don't know exactly what it'll look like going forward. I, I, I thought he would tailor it a little bit more to help George uh, showcase what he can do, but George obviously has got a lot of arm talent, calm, cool head on his shoulders. He's a competitive guy. George does, I think, you know, doesn't like the fact that they weren't very good a year ago. Um, but at this point in time, where where everything's at in D two AAA, Brimwood Academy doesn't have the horses that you know Macaulay and Baylor and I mean even Knoxville Catholics got Tyree King, who is maybe the best player in the state in twenty twenty six. So um, you know, it, they just don't have as many weapons uh, around George. George still not got a great offensive line. That's not changed since last year. And, uh, you know, even the best of players, if you don't have enough around them in a team sport, are going to struggle. So I think George has got to just focus on himself, do what he does best, um, you know, do everything he can to help his team win and understand some Friday nights it may just not be enough because they don't have as much uh, talent as uh, as some of these other schools that, you know, in this new kind of modern D- D- uh, Division II AAA and it's a thrill event with some of these schools and the talent that they're able to bring in. Austin, a couple coaches' questions, man. Tony Vitello finally got the payday that he was looking for. I think he'd make more than some MLB coaches or managers these days. Okay, so shout out to him for that. So that Thanks question. Thanks for Foster money, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Austin, um, I don't mean the NFL money. I mean just the 104.5. Time. That's right. Ah, get out of here, Austin. <laughs> Come on, man. You ain't supposed to flip it on me like that. Austin's spicy this Austin morning. Austin ready this morning, man. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, but Tony V got the bag. And the other question is in the, in, in the current sport, football, too. If if Tim Banks goes out and have that type of year, man, do you expect his name to be a little bit hotter? Or will Danny White and Coach Heupel and, 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 and the powers of be try to keep him around for as long as they possibly can? Uh, you know, that's a great point. Um, you know, I, I would expect if he has a great year on the defensive side of the ball, um, you know, the, the, he'll get some, some suitors. Now, ultimately, he wants to be a head coach. Yeah. Um, but it will be interesting to kind of see how that plays out. You know, I think, uh, you know, you're looking at a defensive coordinator that's on the last year of his contract, I believe. And so, you know, uh, I think that the, there's a there's some talk of an extension, but uh, I think a lot of that will depend on, you know, kind of what, you know, Coach Banks wants to do slash, you know, what, you know, the, the administration wants to do. Um, and, you know, if you let him get out there and he has a really strong year, does that put Tennessee in a tough spot, you know, from a standpoint of like, you know, Peter says, oh, well, uh, I'll see you guys later. <laughs> we'll ride this, ride this hot hand to somewhere else. So, um, 
you know, that, that, that part's some, a storyline to watch. And then, uh, you know, Coach Vitello, you know, deserves everything he's getting, right? He's, he's, he came along at the perfect time. Tennessee had been looking, you know, Tennessee fans have been looking for a winner. Uh, he kind of caught lightning in a bottle, had, um, you know, that uh, personality that, you know, was super approachable out in public. He gravitated towards any fans that wanted to take a picture, wanted an autograph, whatever. And uh, just kind of that fiery Italian personality, mm. you know, between the white lines on, you know, on a game day is something Tennessee fans can just resonate with. And so, you know, the Vol fans love them some Tony Vitello, and Tony Vitello reciprocates that, you know, immensely. For well, sure. He is Austin Price at Austin Priceless on Twitter, VolQuest, and on three covering Tennessee athletics. Uh, great to get to a game week, Austin. We appreciate you as always. Appreciate you guys. Thank appreciate you. It yes, sir. Austin. Austin Price with us this morning. I-, I wanted to ask about the George McIntyre thing because I've gotten a lot of comments from Tennessee fans about this, yeah. and I'm just going to quote the great Coach Dave McGinnis. Can we please just keep our powder dry? Yeah, please. I've and even seen in the chat a there lot were of that. a lot of comments in uh, on VolQuest about this. Said like, I, I'm close to the situation again because I've I've covered and broadcast the high school football in this area for a while, and the idea that like the new regime at that school and Paul Wade coming over and taking over is running this quote unquote 1980s offense that like Paul Wade has had success everywhere that he has been. Like, everywhere. Like, he won state championships at Innsworth. He's won state championships at Davidson Academy, at DCA. Now he's at BA. Like, this idea that a high school coach is hurting a quarterback because of a new system is completely unfair and ridiculous. It's week one. The kid is a senior in high school. Like, we got to keep her powder What's dry. What's the gripe bit. for him, uh, for George, then? Like, it's just that some folks expected a different product. They lost or? to a really good team. They lost to CPA a really good team. is a... Power, they got a lot of good football players. Yeah, I've seen it in the chat, too, and I was just wondering what's the gripe. I hadn't seen George play live. So. It, it, and I watched most of the game. We were on air for Nashville SC, so I've caught up with some of it. But, like, it's a brand-new system. They're going from kind of a high pool system that he was in sophomore year that he thrived in to now it is a lot of under center, pro-style, run the football. It's going to be different. Like, Will Levis is changing systems. It's going to take time for him to adjust. Like, any quarterback at any level. It's not going to be a finished product week one. The kid's in high school. Like, too many Tennessee fans just don't want to have nice things and just hit the panic button way too quickly for me sometimes. I was just wondering, was he, like, missing, like, bad throws? There was, like there was a late interception that won the game for CPA. Oh, okay. okay. Mm-hmm. But okay. again, like, it's week one of a high school football season. Yeah. Like, the legendary Maurice Fitzgerald will tell you, anybody who listen, like, regular season wins and losses just get you ready for the postseason. Okay. It's a playoff sport in high school football. So it's week one, new system. I, I'm just, I want to take the time to tell people to keep the powder dry. And I think Austin uh, understood that as well. So anyway, there's my rant for the day. Uh, I'll shut up when we come back because Nick Saban said something pretty funny on television. We'll play for you next. <laughs>